It's that time of the year again. You know exactly what I mean, right? Trees are changing colors, leaves are falling, and my lips are starting to get cracked. You got sweaters, hoodies, hot chocolate, and Halloween Town. Mix that with all the video game releases and the fact that the new generation of consoles are on the horizon, things are going so well right now, knock on wood. This part of the year always reminds me of snuggling up in the chilly weather when I was younger and playing Xbox with my controller under the blanket because my fingers were too cold. So I think it's time we revisited some hot video game bangers one time for the one time. Today's video is going to be a bit less serious than usual, so hop in the car because we're going shopping at the bargain bin in the electronic section of Walmart. Let's dig into some tracks that you may or may have not heard about throughout video game history, starting now. Have you ever been sitting in a save room, and you hear the angelic sounds of music straight out of heaven's premier video game studio? Persona 5 is one of the most recent games to suck me into its universe. Hearing this exact song after almost dying on merciless mode is a godsend. I'll never forget when I was getting my ass kicked by this strong coffin looking dude, and he kept spawning minions, and I kept dying. This song serves to remind you that while this journey does have an end to it, you aren't there yet so enjoy this day. I tried to write this part of the script without my shoulders going to the rhythm of the song, but I couldn't. And to be honest, I've never played Breath of Fire 3 either, but I have seen very positive reviews about it, and if it's anything like this track, it's gotta hit super omega different. This game released around the same legendary time period as Dragon Quest 3, Super Mario RPG, Final Fantasy 4, and Final Fantasy Tactics. Many of the games released in this two or three year period ended up being remarkable and surviving the test of time. And Breath of Fire 3 was no different. Ah, <sighs> now we can talk about something I've been trying to get to for a while now. No, 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 not today. God, not today. I was talking about scary horror games. You know, psychological thrillers, jump scares, you, you've played them before, right? But I wanted to focus on one particular series, Silent Hill. Silent Hill games are very different beasts when it comes to the scary genre. The atmosphere and the music combined build up tension every second that you play. These are those games that make you question things in real life, and when you second guess going to the bathroom at nighttime, you know the game was good. Silent Hill 1 is regarded as one of the scariest games of all time for a reason. Fun fact, me and my brother beat Silent Hill in two days, casually of course because we're filthy casuals. If you've never played Silent Hill and had the pleasure of trying to find your missing daughter in a town full of creatures, bloody dogs, miniature people with knives, a cult, and puzzles, now would be the best time. And yes, we will be coming back to Silent Hill by the time this video ends. Since this video is about celebrating and recognizing video game music over the years, and we all have different tastes, you might have songs that aren't on this list, and you know what? That's okay. All the songs on this list are reminders that video games are beautiful and versatile. Some games stand out for their storytelling, and others for gameplay. But all games share one thing that separates them from movies and paintings and TV shows, and that's interaction. You, the player, aren't watching Tom Cruise defeating the baddies and getting the girl in the end. You are Tom Cruise. Pog you! You control the protagonist and you have a look into what they think, feel, and act like. Games are so damn cool, dude. To go even further beyond, games can be as cinematic as AAA titles like Uncharted, or profound experiences like Nier Automata. In all honesty, video games are a mixture of everything and they're super underappreciated. You have artists, writers, musical composers, producers, animators, the list goes on. No longer are we in the days of pixelated palm. The time is now old man and things are only going to get better. But I digress, let's get back on topic. Before we do so though, I need to go. Mukuro Ikusaba. <gasps> So you might be wondering what just happened. If you know, you know. But if you don't know, this game is Danganronpa 1, and this scene is probably the highlight of this game. So if you didn't want to see spoilers, 
Will, you have anything you want to say to the people? Copy. My bad. So basically, this guy and okay. this chick are in a killing game trapped in a school with 14 other students until one person wins it all. Along the way, there's secrets, plot twists, fan service, uh, a talking mastermind bear if you're into that kind of thing. This game is mwah, 10 apple pies out of 10. The song you're hearing is given a whole fan base goosebumps, and whenever this song comes up in future games, you'll know some shit is going on. You know what else was nice though? Doom. More specifically, Doom Eternal. I don't know if any game I played has ever given me more anxiety than this one. Picture this. You're walking down the street, peacefully unbothered, then BOOM! The street explodes, you have creatures walking around, a shotgun spawns in your hand for some reason, you, babies are crying, cars are crashing, volcanoes are going off, and you hear this song kick in. Now you know why Doom Eternal's gunplay, the music, the boss fights, all the encounters, everything is perfectly combined to make you feel like the world is against you. And boy, did it hit. Shoutouts to Doom Eternal. Now for another character that has to eliminate everything in his path, we have to speak about Nintendo's flagship character. The popular beloved Italian mechanic himself, Mario. Super Mario 64 was the first game that many people played, and if you ask them what their first memory about it was, they'll tell you it was the slide race, the penguins, or swimming with the fishes. And you know what? I did throw that baby penguin over the edge. And I'm not ashamed of it anymore, Mom. <laughs> to counterbalance this though, I also got eaten alive by the shark in Dire Dire Docks. So, life has a way of coming at you fast sometimes. Seeing the footage of this game while editing this video made me realize that games are much more than just pixels on a screen. Just hearing Mario run brings me back to sitting with my brother when I was in elementary school and watching him play Nintendo 64. Nintendo has always captured that childlike wonder of the Mario universe and crafted it for everyone to play. Whether it's Mario Party, Mario Kart, or Mario Paint, there's a ton of memories just waiting to be made with family and friends. Next game on the list, Fire Emblem Three Houses. The game that had Claude Von Regan. That, that's literally it. That This is exactly what I wrote in the script. Claude. Okay, well if I have to sum up three houses, you're thrown into the game as a professor who has to choose between three characters that hail from separate families. Each of the three paths have their own unique storylines, so replayability is fairly strong. Once you choose who you will side with, <coughs> Golden Deer, you can then recruit students that are willing to join your cause, if they develop an interest. The main draw to the series is the bonds that you create with your friends and foes. The evolution of characters from beginning to end will have you cheering for them by the time it's all over. You'll be arguing on Twitter over which one of your characters is objectively the best in no time. Or starting from your last save once one of your favorite characters dies. The Fire Emblem series has a ton of absolute jams, and this game is no different. If you know anything about me, you'll know that I love JRPGs. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was a highly anticipated game released for the Nintendo Switch in late 2017. An entire horizon of white, a sea of clothes, and at its heart, a world tree piercing the heavens. This, this is the world we call home. The characters you meet and spend hours fighting alongside of are only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the bigger picture. 
The plot, the world, the soundtrack create a universe that's only available to us mere mortals through things like art and video games. Rex and his crew of degenerates will have adventures ranging from places under the sea to forests and cities in the sky. The areas in this game are gorgeous. It's always a treat to explore and see what kind of new unfamiliar enemies and wildlife you can encounter. One thing that I personally love in video games that really makes it immersive is scaling. A common example of scaling would be if you're in the middle of New York City and you're walking down the street and you see all these tall buildings and stuff that make you feel really small. That when done right in an adventure game type of setting can really set the tone. That's why I love it in video games. God of War is one of those games that does it right. The combat in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 can be a bit complicated I will admit, but if you can get the hang of it you can pull off some really sick damaging combos. And at the end of the day, you got some bangers in the background. Speaking of bangers... Do you like jazz? <laughs>
Not only are these songs from horror games, but the songs give off a sense of relief or comfortability which is kind of ironic. These songs have always kind of intrigued me. While there's an apocalypse nearby, the songs are a sort of beacon of hope and maybe even safety. While one person will find this song eerie, another will find relatability or peace. In Resident Evil Code Veronica, you're stuck on an island filled to the brim with zombinos and bosses and Steve, dude. <laughs> uh, sorry about, about that, that little, little misunderstanding, misunderstanding, but I thought you were another one of those monsters. Shut up! Yet, once you find a save room, all that worry melts away. In Silent Hill 2, James receives a letter from his dead wife, and it tells him to meet her at a certain place. Throughout the game, the words on the letter disappear, and in the end it turns out to be a blank page. What was it that exactly drove him there? What does it all mean? Well, everything the developers did, all the way from the voice direction, to the scenes, and to the music, were all done, on purpose. These songs are sort of hazy and angelic in a weird way. The fact that humans are capable of encapsulating what is essentially horror and despair into one song is amazing. Any person from all walks of life can interpret this song however they see fit, and you'll always have someone who feels moved by it. That is the beauty of video game music. Now, now, it's only right that we visit the fighting game side of things, which is one of the most iconic genres ever. Street Fighter Third Strike. Third Strike has a special energy to it that doesn't really exist in our game industry nowadays, and that's because it was made in the 90s. It has that ultra 90s vibe to it. Everything from the menu to the gameplay just sits perfectly right with my soul. I can't think of any other fighting game besides Tekken and Melee that can set the stage as great as they do and get players' hearts pumping while they try to end each other's hopes and dreams. Not only did Street Fighter Third Strike set the bar for how fighting games should be made back then, graphically and sound-wise, but even in the year 2020, this game still holds up. So don't worry, while you're getting your ass kicked by your older brother that keeps spamming the same shit, at least you're listening to some banging tunes in the background, am I right? So, for the last game of the day, we need to speak about Super Smash Bros. Melee for the Nintendo GameCube. If you follow my Twitter, you'll know that I follow the competitive scene for lots of games, and the one scene that I have the most respect for is Melee. The game's history is about passion and ride-or-die loyalty, and the fact that it's been alive for nearly 20 years now is a testament to that. The amount of times I've seen Mango come back from stock deficits is insane. You know, can't just do crash cancel against Sheik's. Seen so many of those are He's gotta go high. Oh, this is oh, how he turns it on. He's turning it on. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god. Oh, holy the rivalries, the pop offs, it's all amazing. The tension during these matches can be felt from a mile away, whether you're in person or watching it on Twitch. When you load into Fountain of Dreams and this track kicks in, you immediately know what is about to go down. Straight business. And the sound design is made in such a way that it feels perfect as a game to be played on a big stage. It's all built layer on top of layer to get you to feel what's at stake. Melee is far from perfect, but it's the closest thing we got. That was emphatic. That was amazing. <laughs> Video games are so much more than just another form of entertainment. The work being put into these pieces of art are filled with effort, time, and love. Three things in life that you cannot take back. Thank you to all the video game developers that aren't looking for a cash grab, but a real experience that leaves the player with something valuable. So many of us have been affected by games that our lives would literally never be the same without them. I'm just a dude who plays games and stuff. If you want to check out my Twitch channel where I go live whenever I'm not working on a video, check out twitch.tv forward slash alexix with an X and not an S. Much love and stay tuned for more content.